The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. Today we're getting back to our super glue gun build. That's right. In the first two episodes, we worked on controlling the heating element with a triac. And then in the second episode, we worked on controlling the motor and trying to extrude the glue through the heating element. Although we had some troubles with that, we didn't quite get there in episode two. Yeah, getting the drive gear to work was a little tricky. But we have some help. Oh yeah. The Grey Glue Gun has returned! Yes, yeah, so years ago when we made that, we did a giveaway on the Element 14 community, and there was a lucky winner that got it, and he actually sent it back to us. Thanks, Black Sheep 32 So now we can take a look at what we did in the past and try to figure out how to do it in the future. Let's get started. Amazing Hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired Designs. Imhotep's Priests. Regrettable Acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. All right, here's the original uh, glue gun. Some of it broke apart. Ironically, the parts that we glued together. Uh, I think it still works though, let's give it a try. So see what's cool about this glue gun is you can just keep going. So if you're like doing, oh crap, that doesn't really work since I'm right-handed. But normally with the glue gun, you're like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. But with this one, as long as you hold the trigger at a certain rate, the glue comes out the same. So you can do thin lines, thick lines. Of course, there's a limit to how fast you can actually extrude the glue. Now this motor, it's not that big. It looks like we probably have the uh, motor controller at the bottom, but it's smaller than some of the other motors that we tried, such as this one, that were unsuccessful. So I think there was something else flawed with what we were doing. Oh, wait, I gotta write hello world in cursive. Was learning cursive really a good use of time in school? It's like, I need to write a beautiful letter. I'm so glad I spent months and months learning this. Now, could you do that with a normal glue gun? I don't think so. Kitten mittens, you'll be smitten. All right, so this glue gun, it looks like we did a complete hack here. Yeah, it looks like the mains are going right to the heater core, and then we have 12 volts or five volts or something coming off of this adapter here. 12 volts, oh, it's mostly a power adapter. So we're probably running the motor at 12 volts, which is what we were doing before. So this one has a temperature sensor on it, so if it's not warm enough, the motor will not extrude. I'm also surprised I still know how to write cursive after all those centuries. Uh, this one has a really aggressive uh, grip wheel. See, it's got this uh, spring-loaded mechanism here that pinches it. So before we were trying just kind of a passive pinch, but yeah, maybe we need to step up our game. Something else I've noticed with this one is if you actually expend the glue stick, look at that, see how it doesn't line up correctly? That's a flaw with this one. Like maybe there could be, I don't know, a sensor or something. You, you actually probably could do that. Like if you could sense the current, if there was no glue stick, the current drawn by the motor would be different and you could be like, beep, 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 load glue stick, beep, 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 please load glue stick. Maybe we could talk. No, oh, that's too much. I'm gonna cost out the talking feature right now. We should have just had something right here blocking that, see? Then the next stick comes in. See, that's also a problem because see how it, it retracts? See when it goes backwards? Now it does that to prevent it from oozing, which is cool, but it also makes it kind of hard to load the next glue stick. This also has a five millimeter shaft and a standard uh, 3D printer gear. And if you look at it compared to the other gears we tried, there's notches in it for the filament. And this gives us additional surface areas to pinch it. So you don't just have the teeth here, you have both edges of what was cut out. And that's also giving us an advantage. So I bought loads of uh, 3D printer extruder gears. I'm gonna see if I have one that matches what we did in the past. This is one of the wheels I got off Amazon. Let's see if it still works. Oh no, ironically the hot glue holding the trigger in place has broken. So the heat of the glue gun is causing the hot glue that held the trigger in place to fall off. That's a major design fail. This is the extruder with the finest teeth too. See, I got many different types. I guess we could try some coarser teeth. 
So what I want to prove here is that we can basically use any standard 3D printer extruder wheel and it'll work. So the idea with this glue gun is like, let's say you're making a cool craft project and you could just make really consistent layers of hot glue. Uh, actually, this one sounds a little crunchy. Yeah, so the 12 millimeter diameter one doesn't work quite as well, probably because it's compressing a little too much and the glue is too tight and therefore it's not able to actually extrude it. All right, I'm gonna go back to the gear that I like the best. I like the coarse gear the best. It seems to be working the best. So this uh, flywheel that I have here, I'm applying constant pressure to it right there. You know, if the diameter of the wheel changes, it doesn't really matter because this is going to apply the same amount of pressure onto the glue stick, allowing it to still extrude. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to take commonly available 3D printer extruder gear that I tried out on this gun. I'm gonna make a new rig for it using one of our other DC motors, and then we can see if we can get that to extrude. All right, I 3D printed this part so we can test this motor with a larger bearing. All right, so we've got the motor here. Now I've got this here and this here, and I'm gonna try to keep this bearing in place. I have to try to keep my bearings. Oh, pizza pan. Look at how slow this goes. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Welcome to Zootopia DMV. How may I help you today? See if this works. Oh no, the glue stick isn't moving. What the heck? Maybe it need maybe it just needs a push. Yeah, it had to apply pressure. Maybe there's not enough pressure on the idler wheel yet. Yeah, maybe this 3D printed part is bending too much and therefore it can't get a good grip. I'll try increasing the voltage, I guess. Oh now it seems to be extruding. Oh wait, it stopped. So the problem we have is see how the plastic part is bending away from itself? Like kind of like a Y? That's the problem. So I need a tougher base plate for this gear mechanism. It might be hot enough to extrude, let's give it a shot. Even the three RPM motor, I mean, it's not as fast as I would like, but it's not bad. I mean, it's gonna have a lot of torque at that low speed. Okay, so what we see here is that this motor, despite its small size, it has sufficient torque to extrude the glue. And maybe we could even have it side mounted like this. That way the handle could be smaller or maybe the handle will just hold the power supply and the circuitry as I waste many glue sticks. Oh, this three RPM motor, I mean, it's not bad. And so by adding this plate here, it prevents the uh, idler wheel from being pushed out with the force, keeping all the force on the glue stick, allowing it to extrude. And the thing that's nice about this is, unlike the original one, this isn't spring loaded, it just sits here, which means it's easier to build. Yay. Now for, of course, foam core mock-up. I thought disappearing purple glue sticks was just a gimmick for kids, but then I realized the clear glue sticks, you can't really see where you've glued. So I'm like, oh, I'm a believer now in disappearing purple. When the user is holding their glue gun, they need to feel like they're in control of their gluing destiny. Freeze! This looks like some sort of like Judge Dredd future gun. All right, I'm gonna pile up more layers, and each one will be less accurately cut than the rest. It'll look less like a gun when we're done. We'll make it more curvy and stuff. It'll look more like a space gun. Well, as long as it looks like a space gun and not an earth gun, we're good. Oh yeah, that's perfectly fine then. But yeah, we, maybe, you know, we could have like almost like a long, like you can see the glue, the glue stick for quite a while. So you could almost like get another one right up to it, like they're mm -hmm. in a row. Cause if you think about, they could almost like kind of cue them up a little bit. Cause I have that, even with my awesome glue gun, my big one, mm -hmm. there's a there's like a point where you're kind of running out of glue, but then you stick another one in and, and most of it- doesn't quite push. Well, yeah. and most of it hangs off the end, so it doesn't really 
like hold right. in place. So if you had kind of like a trough for the next stick. Because I mean like this is the mechanism that pushes the glue stick and like grips it and pushes mm -hmm. it in. Which will be interesting moving it that far forward. I wonder if there's any risk of it jamming. Okay, so here is the potential problem, Karen. So let's say you're extruding forward. Again, this is really slow. Well, what happens when the glue stick goes past the gears, like right there? Yep. So can you load another one in behind it? Mm -hmm. Wait, let's see if this one pushes the other one out. Oh yeah, that would work. Okay, Karen, we finally got the glue gun to extrude some glue using a fairly small DC gear motor. Cool, and we can get a more powerful one that's the same size, right? A faster one. Oh, excuse me, faster. Because the trick was we had to find one with a five millimeter shaft for the five millimeter 3D printer extruder heads. Mm -hmm. But we did test all of the heads and pretty much all of them work. So um, yeah, I think we're pretty safe there. And we also did it without a uh, spring-loaded uh, idler wheel. Yeah. So if the yeah, idler wheel nice. just, just stays put, it's a lot easier to build. Cool. In the next episode, we're going to continue working on the glue gun extruder portion using a faster motor and also get started programming with the microcontroller that's going to drive everything. PWM, ADC, touch control, and more. If you have any comments or questions about the build, go to the super glue gun space on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. Stick around, we'll see you next time. War horse, I was tricked. Hermione and the beast. Why use a pen when you could extrude piping hot glue? What if there was a cat that could clean time? <laughs> <laughs>